Finnegan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Andre Johnson. Hey, Andre. How you doing, man? What's up, man? What's going on? Hey, congrats on the Hall of Fame finalist. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well deserved. Obviously, a long time coming. You and Reggie Wayne both going same time. Miami boys. I think this is a very remarkable thing. Is this something you put high on your like checklist? Was this something that you dreamt about, thought about, or would you have been torn either way if it ended up not happening? Um, I I think it's more um, once I once my career was over. I didn't really think about it when I was playing. I think when my career was over. Um, you know, I just kind of looked at my stats and things I had accomplished, and I was just like, damn, like I really got a good chance of making it in the Hall of Fame. But that was never a goal of mine when I came into the NFL. Well, I, I think whatever your goal was, whenever it came into the NFL, it, there's no way that you didn't exceed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you know, yeah. every time you play in Houston, what do you got, J.J. Watt and who? Andre. Mm -hmm. yep. That is literally the team that the two guys that built the Houston Texans. And then when you came to the Colts, bro, Everybody loved you. Did you feel that whenever you were in Indy? And is that how it was everywhere you went? Well, I had a, a relationship with a lot of the guys there through uh, Reggie and Edrin. And um, so it, it was comfortable for me. Uh, Coach Pagano was there. Um, Coach Chizinski. All those guys, you know, Coach Coach Pagano recruited me to Miami. Coach Pagano was like family to me. So um, that made it that made it so much easier for me to come to Indy. That's why it was no hesitation for me coming there. I, I didn't even take another visit after I visited Indy. Well, Coach Pagano is here, actually, Andre, and uh, I know he got all excited, almost emotional while you were saying that. Chuck, one of the guys you recruited out of high school is now a Hall of Fame finalist. Good eye, Chuck! Yeah. Good eye! It was <laughs> easy. Anybody could have found this dude. What was he it like was special, man. What was it like in high school going over whenever you were recruiting Andre Johnson? It was awesome, man. Miami High. That was incredible. What was our uh, head coach's name down there? My good oh, buddy. Oh, Coach Dunn. Yeah. Coach Dunn. Yeah, he was, he was incredible. I just remember, like, when we came, I tried to warn Butch, you know, how quiet you are, <laughs> and, and you don't say a whole lot. And you remember that home visit, right? And kind, right. Of, kind of take us through that a little bit to tell the boys and everybody watching the program right now kind of how that, that initial home visit went when I brought Coach over. Yeah, he, uh, Bush Davis was just like, you know, damn, like he don't really say much. So <laughs> it was, it was like, you know, I was just really sitting there just listening. And, um, you know, they, they're trying to pull things out of me to get me to talk. And I'm just kind of sitting there on the, we used to have this huge bean bag <laughs> in the living room. And I, uh, I just would sit on the bean bag and just sit there and just listen to the coaches, let them talk and, you know, say whatever they had to say. But, Butch was a little worried because Butch couldn't get nothing out of me when he was there at the house. So how is that just how you've always been? Because, you know, you talked in the locker room amongst, you know, you weren't like obviously the most vocal guy, but you did sure. talk. You're at friendly with everybody. Always been quiet. That's just kind of who you are and who you have been. Yeah, it was just more of me being comfortable with you. Um, you know, when I'm comfortable around a person. It, it takes me to be around a person a few times before I open up and really start talking to them. So do you hate this entire process here of this Hall of Fame <laughs> shit? Because you're going to have to talk to a lot of people, I think. You know what I mean? I, I think it's going to have to happen. <laughs> no, I, 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 don't, I can't hate this. This is, uh, you know, being a chance to be in football heaven. So I'll do all the talking they need me to do. <laughs> all right, well, it's a celebration of you, man. You've earned it all. Go ahead, AJ. Andre, I'm, I'm curious about like what was your off-season workouts like? And I, I asked that because I, I remember the clip of Devontae Adams talking about running full-speed routes in the off-season. He was kind of not knocking, but saying, like, guys want to show these sweet clips, you know, going through the ladder and showing how sweet their feet are. And he would say, no, go run full-speed routes, cutting in and out of breaks and everything. Do you agree with that? And, and what did your off-season kind of look like? Yeah, so, um, I mean, at the time I came in the league, you know, we had a lot of guys from Miami that was in the league at the time. And um, we all would meet. We had a certain date that we all would meet at the University of Miami and start training together. So you can imagine, you know, you're having 20, 30 guys that are all in the NFL and we were competing against each other every day. So I don't care if we were out there playing, you know, just playing basketball or whatever it was like. Everything was a competition. So, I mean, you had 
guys that were playing at the highest level in the NFL and you were competing against them every day. Um, there's a video that circulates too with me, Chad, Santana, um, Antonio Brown when he was a rookie. Um, we would all get together and do field drills at Moore Park. So um, those were some of the things we did, you know, because we had a lot of guys that were from Miami that was just uh, that were in the NFL. That obviously hasn't changed. South Florida has a great representation across mm -hmm. the entire NFL. Always will. That is just something that is a part of the football culture. But the you, you know, what you're talking about there with 20, 30 guys going back, working out at the same time, it's well documented. There's obviously 30 for 30s about it. There's folklore about it. And there's dreams and fantasies that it'll happen again. Like, how? When? Do we think? Huh? Do we think Miami's coming back? Do we think the U's coming back ever, Andre? What, what are the? Where are we at in the belief percentage of the U coming all the way back? No, nah, I, I definitely believe it'll be back. Um, just looking at the kids now that are staying home, I think a lot of the kids were leaving. Um, I think even Chuck can say this. Uh, when I was coming out, so we, my class was the first class that where we got all our scholarships back. And um, everybody that signed with us that year were pretty much from South Florida. Uh, it may have been only a couple guys that wasn't from South Florida. So I think when we're able to get the guys from home, we're able to be successful. And that's what Coach Cristobal is doing right now. Coach Cristobal needs to find that guy that went up going to jail. Yeah, come on. They need to find another one of those guys. Yes. You know, the yachts and thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about, Andre. Yeah. We've all had 30 for 30s on that. Mm -hmm. 30, and I was legal. Now, that guy was just ahead of his time. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, guy was, that guy was way, way ahead, way ahead of his time. Uh, another team that seemingly all the way back is a team that you're very closely mm -hmm. affiliated with and obviously a city that you're very tight with. Do you still work with the Houston Texans? And how do you feel about what D'Amico has been able to do? V vibe now, granted, without CJ last couple of weeks, whatever. But the future seems very bright down there. Are you around a lot? Are you in the building? What is your kind of day-to-day with the Houston Texans? Yeah, I'm just more on the uh, corporate side. Um, you know, just going to a lot of dinners, shaking hands, kissing babies, things of that nature. But uh, I'm, uh, you know, I go out to practice some days and, and watch practice and things like that. But the uh, energy here, I mean, from, I've never seen, I've been to every press conference here, um, except for dumb capers and for every coach that was hired. And when D'Amico was hired here, I've never seen a press conference like that um, here in Houston. Um, you had so many people former players, the whole city was excited, and we knew what type of coach we were getting once we uh, once he was hired. Yeah, and it's paying off. I mean, C.J. Stride mm -hmm. yeah. seems to be the guy. There was conversations. I don't know if you kept up with all of it during the offseason. We had to because we're day-to-day -day in the sports world. Right. They made up some test that mattered all of a sudden. Remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We just yeah. learned this Q17. S S2. There it is. The S2-17 test. test. C.J. Stroud, worst scorer of all time. It's like, well, we didn't know this test even existed. Long time. This test, this guy's dumb. This guy, that's what they were saying about it. It's like, what are we talking about? And then he steps in there, seems to be the smartest rookie to ever play quarterback in the history of the game. What a home run with D'Amico. Love everything about Houston. Got people fantasizing potentially about, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, Andre, let's be honest. And I know you talk to him, so you could be honest with us too. Soon Because he lies. Yeah, he does lie. He lies right to our face. But soon as the Texans clinch the playoffs, J.J. Watt's coming back that week, right? Uh, I don't know. Um, why would I share that with you guys? Whoa! <laughs> I was trying. Hey, hey no one's watching. Just talking. Nobody yeah. knows. Nobody's we're just, watching. We're talking. Pat, you ask. He knows you. He's not going to talk to me. Well, yeah, you're right. He's going to take a couple times to talk to you, I guess. But like, he, did, <laughs> he literally just told us that. But, like, J.J.'s lying to us. Yes, you know what yes. I mean? That's right. He's lying to us. He's in a gym right there with Brad mm -hmm. as yeah. if he was in high school again. Yeah. Tested his it's conditioning a couple weeks ago. He's in the building a little bit too yeah. much as if he's a player. And then Andre, in a little bit of wait a second. What's it seems like on? the big whites <laughs> may be back. You, you, know, you never know with J.J., man. Um, he's a guy who's always working out and take care of his body. So you never know what can happen with him. That's the shit he's saying. Yeah. Uh, That's the same shit D'Amico. Remember, D'Amico? Oh, yeah. Like, We'd welcome JJ <laughs> yeah. back in any we'll fucking capacity. Up. Open yeah. arms. Yeah. He was, it's like, wait a minute. And he's still training. Yes. As if went down to Cush's house. Was like, yep. Cush, maybe we get some of that Russian gas. Test it out. Like, look at this fucking guy. Yeah. I, Look at this thing. I think so. That's recent? No, I think it looks like okay. summer. Oh, that was like a week ago. Oh, oh still. Like I mean. <laughs> 
Just a thirst trap, though. I mean, he posted it. He, yeah. he just wanted to let people know. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wanted to let people know. Dad bods, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Andre, what does the next <laughs> couple weeks look like here for you? And obviously with this Hall of Fame stuff, feeling pressure, will think about it, won't think about it, we will talk about it when it comes up. How do you handle all this, you think? Man, to be honest, I don't really uh, I don't really talk about it much. Um, it's, I'll talk about it only when people ask me about it. I don't really, uh, you know, I always tell people it's out of my control. You know, I can't go out there and catch another touchdown. I can't catch, catch another pass. So, you know, if it's, I'm sure it'll be brought, brought up a lot now, you know, because the finalist list came out again. So um, that's, that's the only time I really talk about it. Other than that, you know, I'm just waiting and sitting patiently to see if it happens. Have you pieced together what the party will look like in Kent if it happens? <laughs> you know, who's performing? What's going on? Miami, a lot of connections. Mm -hmm. A lot of connections down there. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I really haven't uh, thought about that yet. But Oh, in your head, though, you just you uh -huh. just thought of yep. yes. mm -hmm. that right there. We just saw yeah. it. Yeah, I hope it gets to happen. Yeah, I just had a... <laughs> what was it? What was it? What was it? Just so we know. You can say it. I was thinking about... Uh, Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's working out right now, too. I don't yeah. know if you see yeah. He's on that big estate that he has. Mm -hmm. He's got car shows. He's talking his shit, and he's working out right now. Oh, yeah. He might be able to go four or five hours. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of Miami. You and Reggie both go in. <laughs> oh, oh man. Ricky Ross will be losing his mind in Canton, Ohio. Whew. We can't wait for that. We wish you nothing but luck. Congrats on all the success on everything. Can't wait to get to the Sports Bar 80. I've been watching stuff. It looks like a great time. That looks like a great time. Do you hang out there much? Yeah, obviously. Not as much. In the beginning, I did, but not as much now. Yeah, I don't know how much you're getting done. You hang out there too much. You know what I mean? True. But certainly a place you need to stop by. Good luck with the uh, merch, and good luck with the Hall of Fame, Andre. We appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Houston Texans legend, Hall of Fame finalist, Andre Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah.